Hi, I'm Bob Canote, and on this episode of the Camp Chaos Chronicles, I'm going to show you how to put a new pedal to the metal. Dang it. So what do I mean by that? Well, in the world of Jaguar ownership, there's different strata. And at the top, you got the guys who have the 100 point restoration of the really low miles original car that, uh, that are only for car shows and special occasions. And that's a very good thing. Those are historical documents and they need to be preserved that way. The other end of the scale are bottom feeders like me. Guys that go out and buy the cheap cars, fix whatever's wrong with them, drive them, enjoy them. And every now and again, we dream of doing modifications and, and other things to our cars that make them more suitable for our needs. We're the guys that keep the cars out of the crushers. Now the modification that many Jaguar XJS owners dream about is a manual transmission in their car. Now what's the problem with that? Well, there were no cars imported into this country that actually had manual transmissions with the exception of some six cylinder cars. That's still not a problem because what you can do is you could simply write a check for I believe it's about $5,500 and you can order up a complete conversion that will put a, I believe it's a T56 Tremec transmission in your car. And then you can add another $1,500 if you're gonna have somebody else do the work for you, if you're made out of money. The issue here is that most of us at this end of the spectrum don't have that kind of money laying around. And many of us, even if they do, like the idea of building their own conversion. And so that's what we're gonna do here. However, you Jaguar XJS guys who saw me waving around an XJS pedal box, I'm sorry, we're not gonna do it with an XJS. We are gonna do it with the XJ40 Champ car that we're uh, hopefully going to be getting up on four wheels and running by the end of this year. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a T5 Tremec transmission in the car with a few mods to make it a little more durable, but I think it's gonna be a great conversion. However, don't bail out yet because everything that we're gonna tell you for the XJ40 also works on one of these. So how are we gonna get started on this? Well, this isn't a particularly difficult project to do. You just have to have a good mental picture of what you need to get it done. And the first thing you need is a pedal box. And this is the pedal box out of the XJ40 Champ car. It's gonna work great. The other thing that you absolutely need is a master cylinder of some kind. More on this later. Now all you gotta do is figure out everything that goes between there and here. Piece of cake. So we're starting with the pedal box. Now the only problem with this pedal box, this darn good unit here, is that it's only got one of these. We need another one for the clutch pedal. Now what I've done here with this side is I've cut out an opening. This was just sort of a blister here that really wasn't serving any purpose, so I took a body saw and I cut this out. Now what this is going to do is give us access to the underside of the pedal box. We can, um, we can then take a piece of 3 8 inch aluminum and weld it in there like that, and that's going to give us a place to mount the master cylinder as well as back here, put a couple of tabs in there to support the new pedal that we're going to be putting in. A couple of things about this cut. First of all, it's got to be straight across in order to simplify everything. And also, this plate has to be, and it's going to be difficult to see this, has to be generally the same shape as the opening as viewed from the top. So what about a pedal? Well, we could go the lazy route and buy another pedal box and pull out the brake pedal, which is what this is, and uh, chop about eight inches out of it and use this for a clutch pedal. That'll work just fine. 
don't have that around here. Plus, we're trying to do this on the cheap. In fact, we're going to try to get this done for less than $100. So we got to come up with something that is going to sort of approximate or what we have here. And the first place we're going to start is with this thing up here. And what I did is I took the measurements off of that pedal there and came up with this, which is pretty much a duplicate of what is on the end of that pedal. And if you look at this pedal, there are bronze bushings pressed into the end of it. These are oilite bushings, which are centered bronze bushings that under pressure have oil infused in them and they stay lubricated for life. And you can buy these things that will press in. Thing is, though, they're a little bit bigger than, than the ones that are in the brake pedal, so I machined them down to match. You wouldn't necessarily have to do that, but we're kind of confined here as far as, as, far as space is concerned, so I really did have to machine this stuff down. So we're not going to install these at this point because we're going to have to weld some kind of a pedal on here and this bushing would get hot enough for all this for all the oil in the bushing to boil out of it. So we're going to have to wait on that. Now as far as the pedal is concerned, took a piece of uh, one inch wide by, I believe that's half inch thick, mild steel that was on the rack and uh, cut a pedal out of it. Now the actual design of the pedal is uh, going to be something we're going to have to cover in some detail here. So, and this is going to be bent up here and probably down here again in order to, to do what we, I think we're going to have to do with it. So this is going to weld on like this. Now the gift that this pedal gave us is that we got a couple of return springs here. We got one that fits on like this and another one that fits on like this. Why is there two of them? Well, you know, knowing Jaguar over the years, it's possible that this big one just wasn't enough to return the pedal the way they wanted it, so they put a lighter one on it to make up the deficit. Good news there is we can take this one and we can use this as a return spring for our, for our clutch pedal. Beautiful. Now what about our master cylinder? Well, this is a Tilton 75 series master cylinder that can use for uh, rudimentary brake systems and, uh, and clutches. And it's, uh, it's a very simple thing. It's kind of what brake master cylinders used to be. And the, the difference here on this particular one is that this thing used to stick out about that far. And my thought was, when I initially purchased this probably 15 years ago, when I was thinking about doing a street annual transmission conversion to my Street XJS, um, I wanted to do the same thing as I had done on my track car, which is machine that off and make a little fitting that will bolt on here. And uh, the fitting will have a hose barb on it. And what that would enable me to do is to take a master cylinder that functions normally, what I thought, in a horizontal position and make it work vertically. Before, I was aware of the fact that they actually make a fitting for that purpose. Whatever, I'm going to use it. it means I got to machine that part, not a big problem. Now, how do we attach this master cylinder to the pedal arrangement? Well, what I've got here is what's called a clevis. You can buy these from companies like uh, Granger or McMaster car and it's got a quarter inch hole down here and it initially had a quarter fine thread hole up here but that is 5 16 fine thread so I drilled that out and threaded it to 5 16 fine and it threads on here also had to cut the end of this bolt off so I could get this thing up as high as possible because as it stands right now, we're going to have to probably have an inch long spacer in between that plate that we mount this to and the flange right there to get it up high enough. We got this pretty much all figured out here, except what our pedal and the tabs that are going to attach it to that bottom of that plate are going to look like. That's what we're going to do next. So what are we trying to do here? Well, let's take this crude drawing here and go through some of the parts that we've got to deal with. 
First of all, we got our master cylinder up above, that black master cylinder that I showed you in a previous clip. That is going to be oriented vertically with its stud sticking down through a one inch spacer plate that is being used to position this assembly in the right position for a reasonably good location for the top of the, the pedal. And uh, we've got the 3 8 aluminum mounting plate that I showed you. We have the clevis that threads onto the stud coming out of the master cylinder. And uh, it is attached to the output arm of the pedal assembly with a quarter inch bolt or a pin right here. Uh, we have the output arm of the pedal assembly and then the input arm right here. Now, one thing that's obvious right now is that we've got this arm angled downward. And the reason for that is that if we just had the arm sticking straight out like this with a pin right here, as we applied pressure to the pedal, this pin would slide over here. And your, uh, the stud then would be pushing on the piston sideways that would cause undue wear or rapid wear of the seal. So we want to avoid that. How do you do that? Well, let's take this bushing and let's draw it down here. And let's draw a line straight out horizontally. What we'll then do is, being that we have three quarters of an inch of travel on our master cylinder, approximately, we're not going to be using all of it, what we're going to do is we're going to measure down from this horizontal line half of that, three-eighths of an inch. And just for giggles, we're going to do the same thing on the top of that line, three-eighths of an inch up, just for visualization purposes. But then what we do is we take our, the length from the center of the bushing up here to the center of the pin of our output arm, which is 1.850. We'll talk about why that is later set a compass to that and then just swing an arc through these two lines. And this one down here, that's the center of our quarter inch hole that we want to have that pin to go through. And to visualize what's going to happen here now is we apply force onto the pedal, the, the pin will swing out just a little bit, but at the end of the cylinder's travel, it'll swing back into the original position. So that way we're going to be keeping the, uh, the stud and the clevis and the piston all lined up as well as we can under the circumstances. So right down here, that's where we take and we draw our arm, like that. And then it'd be a simple thing to, once we've got all this figured out, then we could just simply make a couple of tabs here that with some holes in it that the, uh, the pivot for the top of the pedal is going to rotate in. Pretty simple stuff so far. But let's determine how we came up with that 1.850. So how do we determine what our pedal length is going to be? Our pivot, we want to be about two inches, roughly two inches below the bottom of this plate right here that our master cylinder is mounted to. There's a clevis that attaches to the output arm of the lever. So it's just a matter of going from the center of the brake pedal and you can see that right about here that's 12 inches a nice convenient length and that's as long as we've made our arm you can get some idea as to why we're going to need a one inch spacer between the uh, the 3 8 inch aluminum plate that the master cylinder is mounted to uh, and the master cylinder. Uh, you can see that this is approximately where we're going to want the pivot point of the pedal at the 12 inch point. For what reference, we'll hold it right about at the end of my finger. Well, if we were to just hold it to the top of the top of this cutout, you can see that we want the pivot to be right about here, but it's going to be way down here. We're going to have to move it up to right about there, which is about an inch in order to make this work. And that's not a big deal. As long as we keep the master cylinder below this, we know that we're going to have enough foot clearance for the master cylinder. So that's what we're looking at. We want it right about there, although it'll actually be welded there. We want the clevis to be right about there. 
And you can see that our mounts, which will be right about here, are gonna be just about perfect with a one inch, not, maybe not even a one inch spacer. It's more like, more like I'd say three quarters of an inch, which is nice. So how long is that arm gonna be that runs from this clevis to the pedal? Let's take a look. So we've got our pedal length from the foot pad, the middle of the foot pad, up to the center of the pivot. That's 12 inches. Now, the question is how long do we make the output arm? During the course of my track car uh, conversion, I discovered that manual brake pedal input to output ratio is six to one. In other words, the input part of the pedal is six times longer than the, the output right here. This, we said was 12 inches. Well, that would be, divide 12 by six, that would be two inches here. Problem is we don't have the room to, to actually do this, the positioning of the pedal. So about the best we could do is 1.850 which 150 thousandths away from ideal, but that's gonna work. This pedal isn't going to meet a lot of resistance from the clock. We don't need the full mechanical advantage that two inches is gonna give us here. This is gonna be fine. Now, if this were a brake pedal, that'd be different. Now that we've got this all figured out, we've got our pedal, 12 inches long, half inch steel. We got our bushing that welds on like this and We've got our output lever, which looks like this. So all we gotta do now is jig this stuff up and weld it together. So this is what our setup looks like so far. We've got the plate, which you've seen before up here. We've got the master cylinder mounted on top of it. We've got a one inch spacer right here that we cut out of aluminum billet. And basically it's bandsaw drill press belt sander work and the two tabs that we've got here that the pivot for the clutch pedal arm bolts to and and what they look like is this we've got the three quarter inch head that the shoulder bolt fits in the shoulder of the shoulder bolt fits down and settles against this right here and we've got a 5 16 course threaded hole right there. So it doesn't actually tighten down on these two. The head of the, the socket head cap screw nests in here and uh, prevents it from, from moving back and forth. Also, a couple of things. First of all, to be able to use this spring and to have enough tension, we actually had to machine a bushing that fits over that part of this, uh, the top of the pedal so that the spring doesn't move, it stays in place and unwinds and unwinds. And you can also see that I had to weld a block of aluminum in here because the brake pedal has enough tension because it's nested up in this part right here, whereas we've got just a flat surface and we're losing all this angle right here to wind the spring up. So that's what that thing is for right there. And you can see that everything lines up. And if you watch the, the travel of the push rod, it's straight up and down. We've got about five inches of travel down here, three quarters of an inch of travel there. It's perfect, as far as we know at this point. So how does this all go together? Well, this is going to fit in like this. And the pedal, of course, is going to require some bending and other modifications yet, but more on that later. And then we've got a piece of 1 8 inch aluminum that will fit like this. It's got to have a hole in it right there so we can gain access to the shoulder bolt for the upper pivot if we ever need to take it out. Because once this stuff is welded in, it's in. It's kind of how she looks. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to weld this in at a couple of spots and test fit everything in there and uh, do a final check before I pull the master cylinder and the spacer off and, uh, and then start to do a little welding. So we've got all the rough fabrication done. We've got all the parts that go in the pedal box itself, tacked in place, ready to be finished welded. Pedal, pedal pads, 
master cylinder, return spring, everything is ready to be tweaked and put together to make this a functional pedal box for a manual transmission vehicle. So if you like these kinds of videos, like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, and maybe leave a comment or two down below so we know we can do to do we do better. And we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.